<laughs> How many remember Let's Make a Deal? The original one with Monty Hall. Now, I know many of you are too young to remember that. The game show has been on the air more or less continuously, and I believe if you are very careful and avoid the precipice of uncertainty, you'll be able to find it somewhere on TV today. Back in the 1980s, a columnist named Marilyn Voss Savant published a description of this problem and presented the correct solution. She was inundated with thousands, literally thousands of mail, this was back before email, <laughs> some from mathematicians and professors, all of which said that she was wrong and it was 50-50. It was so today, I'm going to present the problem to you and show you how she was right and the professors were wrong. <laughs> I'm sure you, those of you who've ever had a class from a professor will enjoy this immensely. <laughs> so I'm going to discuss the problem. I'm going to talk about the obvious solution, which I, perhaps some of you may still believe in. And then I'll talk about the counterintuitive solution, which the introduction mentioned, and then why the counterintuitive solution is correct. Now, today's presentation is going to be a little less audience participation than I had originally intended, and I hope you forgive me for that. Let's Make a Deal Game is something where the contestants were dressed up in outlandish costumes in the hopes of being chosen by the presenter. So here's someone who dressed up as a Toastmaster's timing light. <laughs> and as you can see, that was not Monty Hall. So let's talk about the problem. At the end of the game, the contestant who had won the preliminaries was presented with three doors. There's one, there's another, and there's a third. Behind one and only one of these doors was a fabulous prize, like a car. But it could have been behind any one of the doors, like that one or that one. The contestant doesn't know which door has the prize, obviously. That would make it a much easier game. <laughs> behind the others are somewhat less <laughs> valuable prizes, like a goat. <laughs> that was a very popular one. In fact, they actually did use real goats, and they called it a zonk. <laughs> those of you who remember that. So yes, you got, you got a real goat, and so unless you were a goat herder and might prefer this one as the prize, most people did, in fact, prefer the car. So the contestant has three doors, and they choose a door. So there, let's say we choose this one. The host would then open one of the remaining doors, and show that it did not have the prize. In fact, it would show the goat. Where's our goat? There's our goat. You got to keep track of those goats. They tend to wander away if you're not careful. Eating everything in the Because the car is only behind one door, there's always going to be a, a door that doesn't have the prize. And so you can, the host can always open a door that has the goat. So they can always do this. And now the question is, which of the two strategies should the contestant take? Should the contestant stick with the door that he has chosen or she has chosen? Or should the contestant switch? What would you do? How many would stay with the door they'd originally chosen? Okay, some of you. How many would switch? How many thinks it doesn't matter whether you stay or switch? How many never raise your hand under any circumstances? <laughs> I was asking. Okay, so I see some of you are still unconvinced of this. So let's take a look at what the obvious solution is. And the obvious solution is that because there are two doors, that the chances are 50-50 that it's behind. That's the obvious one. And those of you who raised your hand or who said it doesn't matter probably felt this way about it. And on the face of it, that makes a certain amount of sense. It makes sense, and it's wrong. <laughs> the non-obvious solution is that you should always switch, because if you stay with the door you've chosen, your chances of winning are one out of three, 
but if you switch, your chances of winning are two out of three. So now, which would you rather play? Which odds do you would you rather play? One out of three, or two out of three? Okay. But now, seeing that some of you are still a little skeptical, I I originally presented this showing the mathematics of it, and since we all love mathematics so much. That convinced no one. <laughs> so let's take a look at this. Supposing we choose the door and we're not going to switch. So there are three possibilities for where the car is. I've left the doors off to keep the clutter down. So we have a goat in one and two and the car in number three. So we choose door one and we lose. All right? Another possibility is the car could be in door number, behind door number two. We choose door one. We get the goat. They got our goat. We lose. Or the car could be behind door number one. We choose door number one, and we win. So of the three possibilities, one of them has us winning. Now let's look at what happens if we switch. Well, one out of three, that's. Okay, if we switch, let's take a look. The car is behind door number three. We choose door number one. The host opens door number two, and says, it's not there, we switch, and we win. All right, supposing the car is behind door number two. We choose door number one, they open door number three, we switch, and we got a winner. And finally, if the car is behind door number one, and we choose door number one, they open one of the goats, we switch, and we lose. So we have two wins and one loss. In other words, if we switch, we win two out of three times. The probability of winning no switching is one third. The probability of winning with switching is two out of three. Why is this right? Because when we don't switch, we only get one door. And the probability of that is one out of three. When we switch, we basically get two doors. And we win whenever we choose the goat. So, the next time you are on Let's Make a Deal, this could be you. <laughs> <laughs>